Hey guys, welcome back for another Trick Tip Tuesday. And for today's tip, I'm going to be talking about uh, welding and metal finishing on pipe and tube. So um, a couple weeks ago, I talked about uh, doing a, a butt weld joint uh, on a tube where you're trying to slide two pieces together. So uh, we've been working on a tubing project uh, here. So we've got this part uh, that we fit in the car, got it where we needed it. And uh, I've got a couple of joints here uh, that I need to weld and metal finish out. So um, I've tacked these, you know, when this was all in, in the car, I tacked these together, that way they're in place. Um, but I still have this butt weld seam here and a couple of plug welds on both sides. And I have one of those on each side of this uh, part here. So uh, gonna kind of talk a little bit about plug welding and then we'll get this welded and I'll show you guys uh, the techniques I use on tubing uh, for being able to sand down that weld and have it not uh, have your sanding not dig into the tubing uh, in a way that's going to you know deform the surface uh, or make it obvious that you uh, sanded right there. So um, yeah, we'll get to the welding aspect of this first and show you guys that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do on these joints is fill in the plug welds that I've got on either side of the butt weld seam. So um, Typically, how I approach uh, these plug welds on tubing, uh, and really other things too, but um, especially on a, on a slip joint like this where you're trying to make sure that everything has the extra strength required for, um, you know, to make sure that the tube itself has as much of the original strength as possible. So, um, you know, with a plug weld, you have that, that round hole, and um, I'm TIG welding these. You can MIG weld them. Um, if I was MIG welding these, I would have made these holes a little bigger. Um, and that's just because of the way MIG welding works as opposed to TIG welding. So with TIG welding, what I'm going to do is with that hole, I'm basically going to be taking the torch and I'm actually going to melt the original metal on the tube around the hole and make sure that that is melted and uh, joined with the slug that's on the inside of the tube here before I even add any rod into the weld. So I'll go around the hole, get that melted, get the puddle started down in there. And then once I've got it to where the plug, the, or the slug on the inside here and the original tube are melted together, then I'll add rod to fill up the hole and to uh, you know add that rod in there to make it strong and, and be able to make it to where we can sand the surface back down and have it nice and smooth. So. Um, I do that with TIG welding because obviously the whole purpose of this is to get that inner slug and the outside tube to be joined together. So I want to make sure I do that first before I add the rod in and uh, you know fill up that hole. So if I was MIG welding these, like I said, I would have made that hole a little bigger. And that's because with MIG welding, you're adding the rod into the hole immediately uh, or the wire you know out of the MIG out of the MIG gun. So as soon as it's sparking, uh, it's adding material into the hole. So you need to make sure that you have enough of an opening to be able to melt the wire down to the slug that's inside the tube first before you start filling up the hole. So a um, little bit of explanation on the difference if I was TIG or making these. So uh, like I said, we're TIG welding these. So I'm going to go ahead and get these two done here and then uh, We'll probably flip it over and do the other side as well. So, all right, so I've got these filled, and like I said, get it all melted together, then add the rod to fill it up, and as I'm as I'm adding the rod in, you know, and melting it into the puddle, um, as it's building up to where I know it's going to be above the surface of the original tube, uh, I start backing off the heat uh, with the pedal. That way, um, I can just create a nice round uh, fill on the top to where uh, it's not going to be, you know, if you fill that hole up and you're too hot when you let off and you look at it, your puddle and your where your hole was will still be visible. You'll still see a kind of a divot 
uh, in there. It'll be a little bit undercut. So make sure you fill it up. And then as you get it to where the, uh, as your puddle comes up and you're adding rod in there and you know you're above the height of the tube, start backing off the heat and then it'll, it'll not uh, penetrate in further and create that divot in your tube. So um, yeah, we'll flip over the other side and uh, get these other ones plugged. All right, so as far as welding up the seam in the tube uh, where the two pieces are joined, um, for starters, I've got the machine set about 160. Um, I know they usually say a rule of thumb when you're welding material is it's about one amp of uh, machine setting per uh, thousands of thickness of material. So if you went by a 120 wall thickness tubing, that would be about 120 amps. Uh, I've got this set at 160 because I've got that slug on the inside of the tube. Um, and so that's obviously taking more heat uh, to penetrate into that tube. So, um, yeah, so got that set there. The biggest thing, just like any version of TIG welding, uh, is to just watch your heat. So watch your puddle, see what it's doing. And when you're welding a seam in a tube and you know you want to metal finish it out afterwards, uh, is to uh, make sure, just like the plug welds, that you have enough material built up so where when you sand it off, you're not undercutting your weld. And have to go either go back in and fill it or uh, those sort of things so um, yeah we're gonna uh, weld this up I am using a 16th uh, filler rod and uh, I've got a slight little bevel uh, that I use the grinder to put on to each side of the tube so there's a little bit of a bevel that I'll be filling uh, and that'll help obviously with uh, making sure that I'm penetrating all the way through there so uh, we'll go ahead and weld this up. All right, so we got that seam finished out. Uh, so we'll let that one cool off. And then uh, while we're doing that, we'll get this other one welded up. But uh, um, yeah, so this will let cool off. Uh, I like to let it set until it's almost completely cool before I go sanding it down. Uh, and that's more or less to help the abrasives uh, when you're sanding it because heat is the number one killer of abrasives. So I don't ever like to sand on a hot weld. So. Uh, we'll let that cool off and uh, we'll show you guys the metal finishing process. All right, so when it comes to metal finishing a uh, weld seam like this in a piece of tubing, um, we've done some videos before on these trick tests about uh, metal finishing and sanding and that sort of thing. Um, and really some of the processes are fairly similar and you really have to, um, especially on a round piece, you really have to watch what you're doing as far as the direction that you're sanding, how you're uh, directing the sanding disc to, um, to you know, grind across the material uh, so that way you don't create flat spots and that sort of thing. So uh, for starters, um, usually what I do is I step down, I start out at a 60 grit disc, and then I'll go to 120, then I'll go to like a medium uh, coarseness, uh, kind of a scotch bright disc, and then I'll even go to a fine uh, coarseness scotch bright disc after that. Um, and then I'll show you one other step after that. That's not always necessary, but 
can really step up the, uh, the finish on a part like this. So for starters, um, like I said, 60 grit disc. And like I've talked about in other videos, uh, there's a, I put a, a pretty big emphasis on the direction of which the sanding disc is rotating across the weld and across the part. So, um, you know, on a round tube, obviously this is more flat, the disc is more flat. So you got a completely round surface uh, in one direction. Uh, so if you're, you know, say with your tube being round, if you're letting the disc spin straight across the surface of the tube, there's a lot more chance of creating flat spots in the material. That way, when you do get your weld uh, ground down, you're going to have these weird flat grooves and spots in your tubing. Uh, and so in order to reduce that, I have the, the disc to where as the disc is going across the tube, it's actually kind of where it's touching, it's grinding in the same direction as the length of the tube. So it's going to be rotating this way and I'll be using this upper edge uh, here, not right on, not on the edge, but the upper part of the flat surface, you know, out in here, uh, I'm going to be using that to sand down, you know, the weld as I go around the tube. So I'm going to be holding the grinder kind of like this and I'm going to be rotating around and I will do a little bit of back and forth this way, but I'm not going across the tube in this direction, which will help uh, or which would create those flat spots and um, not exactly the the proper finish that you want in a part like this so I'm going to start grinding this down like I said start with I start with 60 to get it really close uh, and then I step up to 120 and uh, finish it out from there so So I sanded that little bit and, you know, part of doing this is obviously blending the surface together. So when you get the weld mostly sanded down, uh, obviously you're getting into the base material a little bit, but, you know, with the disc coming across the surface, you know, in, in this kind of a direction, it's, it's not gouging deep into the base material. So you're not taking off a lot of material. You're not compromising the strength of the part uh, by digging into it, uh, you know, deeply that way. So I'm going to step up to 120, kind of do the same thing, go over it, uh, and then I'll show you the other steps. And also when I'm doing this, I'm not applying a ton of pressure down uh, on the part. I'm just kind of letting the disc skim the surface uh, as I you know, move it around uh, to be able to blend it all together and again, not gouge uh, deep into the surface. So stepping up to the medium coarseness uh, scotch brake. <laughs> now the fine scotch brake. And again, the reason for stepping up is to help blend the surface together uh, and to also work out the scratches from the heavier grit disc so you have a nice finish on here. So really as this is here, um, in most applications, this would be ready for the next step. So if you want to you know, keep building your part, uh, this here would be pretty good for most powder coat paint situations uh, to where you're not going to uh, really see that visible spot where you, uh, you know, welded this and joined it together and sanded it all out. So, um, but the next step from this, uh, after using Scotch-Brite, if you're really trying to uh, get something to a really nice finish, um, let's say you're doing a handrail, uh, you know, something that's gonna be highly visible or something that um, when you coat it, you want it to just have a super smooth finish all the way around. The next step, would be to step up to a pipe polisher, uh, which as you press this into the material, the arms uh, 
are spring loaded so it kind of wraps around and this can really smooth out the surface so if you wanted to use one of these So you can see uh, after after that, I mean, did the sanding and it didn't take long at all for the uh, the polisher to really uh, smooth that out. Now, obviously, if I was doing the whole tube, I'd go over the whole thing uh, all the way around, get the finish real nice and even. But uh, you can see how easy it can be to join tubing together, get it welded, know it's going to be strong, and make it to where. Uh, you don't have visible seams uh, in your project. So uh, hopefully this tip on uh, getting this welded out metal finished uh, on tubing uh, will help you in your projects. So uh, thanks for watching this week's Trick Tip Tuesday, and we'll see you next week.